part of the preparedness mindset is about being less dependent on other people. Growing or knowing where to find your own food can really help with that. There are probably some plants that we call weeds in your yard that are edible and actually good for you. I'm Jendi for MomPrepares.com. The very first thing I want to make clear is that you need to be careful of where you pick the plants. You don't want to go right beside a road in case of possible pollution. You want to be careful it's an area where there has not been chemicals sprayed at all. So I'm going to talk about five popular weeds or invasive plants that are edible and healthy. First, I have to mention dandelions. Everybody knows what they are, and they're one of the first mentioned when you talk about edible plants. Dandelions actually have more beta carotene than carrots. You want to pick the leaves when they are young and tender in the spring and possibly in the fall. You can use dandelions in salads, and there's even a traditional French soup called cream of dandelions. Second is bamboo. Bamboo is a good source of fiber that they say tastes a bit like corn. You, again, you want to pick them with when they are young, within a couple weeks old, and under one foot tall. Unlike dandelions, bamboo needs to be cooked first. You actually want to remove all the tough outer parts and boil the centers until the bitter taste is gone. And then you can use it however you want. The third plant is violets. I'm referring to wild violets that grow outside in the yard, especially in the spring. Not African violets that are often used as house plants. You don't want to eat the African violets. Wild violets, however, have edible leaves and flowers that can be used for tea, in salads, as cake decorations, and even as jelly. I read that the flavor can vary from a taste like green peas to a very sweet flavor, so you might want to taste it before you start the recipe. Number four is clover, which may or may not technically be a weed, but it is an invasive edible plant. White clover leaves are fine to eat raw or cooked. Again, you want to pick them when they are young and cook it like you would cook spinach. The young flowers can be used raw in salads, but the root has to be cooked first. Clover tea is very good for coughs and colds. Red clover leaves are also good for salads and teas, but the red clover flower heads should, flower heads should be soaked in salty water, boiled or cooked before you eat. Good news is that they have a lot of protein. Number five is nettles, and they do sting. <laughs> Wear gloves when you are picking nettles, and then blanch the plant to stop from getting stung again. Nettle treat is very nutritious for you, and is said to make your hair and skin healthier. Dump your leftover nettle tea into your house plants for a good tonic for them. The nettle leaves are high in calcium and iron, and they have 10% more protein than any other vegetable. You can cook the nettle leaves in place of spinach in any recipe. One big caution, you have to pick the nettle plant in the spring before they have flowered. If you miss it, don't worry too much. They usually grow back in the same spot the next spring. So those are five very common invasive plants that grow where I live and maybe where you live and they can help supplement our food supply. Make sure you check out momprepares.com where we help smart moms be prepared for anything. And please subscribe to this channel before you leave. Thanks for watching.